I've got an article here, and I'm about to read the headline. Just pay attention to how you feel when you hear it. In 2026, Bitcoin will consume more power than the world does today. Pretty apocalyptic, right? And I can imagine it made you feel something along the lines of, Bitcoin seems like an uncontrollable house fire and we need to extinguish it. Maybe you'd even be skeptical to listen to me if I was to try and explain or convince you that that article was wrong. But the article was wrong. The article was actually posted in 2017 and its prediction was about the year 2020. And yet here we are in 2023 and Bitcoin currently counts for about 0.057% of the world's global energy usage. Not 100%, not even close. They were off by a factor of nearly 2,000. That little experiment at the beginning of the video was just to show an example of how headlines can bypass our rational brains and make us believe or feel things about something that we know little to nothing about. Unfortunately, there are countless headlines that associate Bitcoin with environmental damage of some sort or another. And I guess so far they've successfully casted Bitcoin into a negative light in the eyes of most of the public. The other thing is, the only other thing I know about Bitcoin is mining Bitcoin is really bad for the environment. Um, my concern would be about the environmental impacts. Interesting, okay, in terms of the energy that it yeah, uses. Yeah, the energy use for people mining the coins. But why are so many people worried that Bitcoin is leading us down a road riddled with apocalyptic catastrophe? And is there any truth to that claim at all? Bitcoin is a disruptive technology. I think it fits the mold to a T. And when technology disrupts, it tends to make enemies of those who were doing just fine before the technology came about. When video kills the radio star, the radio star is gonna have a few choice words for video. That was a song reference. It just so happens that if you want to attack Bitcoin, its energy usage is the lowest hanging fruit. It's an easy attack because everybody understands the concept of wastefulness. It's pretty ingrained in our evolutionary biology at this point to not like wasteful people or wasteful things. Combine this with the fact that it's hard to understand why Bitcoin needs to use electricity in the first place, and the hit piece practically writes itself. But just because it's low-hanging fruit does not mean that it's correct. If you ask many people about Bitcoin, they'll probably recite this one factoid to you. Bitcoin uses more energy than entire countries. Whoa. Pretty intense, right? Until you realize that the same thing could be said about Christmas lights in the US alone. But you don't see any headlines painting the United States' use of Christmas lights as an apocalypse level threat. Because it isn't one. And while we're listing things that use more energy than entire countries, we can add a few more things to that list. Google, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, the cruise industry, Christmas lights, household drying machines, private jets, the zinc industry, and basically any other sizable platform or industry. As it turns out, measuring Bitcoin's energy usage in terms of some countries is just about as useful as measuring somebody's height in terms of sticks. If you were to say, oh yeah, Bob is about 32 sticks tall, it wouldn't tell you anything about Bob's height because sticks themselves vary hugely in size. And in the case of countries, the most energy intensive country uses about 3 million times the energy of the least energy intensive country. That'd be like giving Bob's measurements from a set of sticks that range in length from a centimeter to 30 kilometers. It's not very informative, but it feels informative. I think that's the point. So rather than giving Bitcoin's energy usage in a unit of measurement as deceptively varied as countries, let's give it in terrible hours the actual unit of measurement for energy that exists for doing just that, measuring energy. Handy. According to Cambridge, the most cited source on the matter, Bitcoin's energy usage is hovering around 100 terawatt hours per year. Now, understandably, that won't mean anything to most people. So let's make a comparison between that and something a little bit more concrete than countries. When it first arrived from Amazon, I didn't know what it was. Uh, I'm just finishing up right now. Is it on? Oh, it's always on. Always on devices consume an estimated 13,000 terawatt hours of energy per year. 13 times the energy consumption of Bitcoin. That means that if everybody was just 10% more efficient at turning off their electronic devices when they're not using them, we could save more than the entire Bitcoin network uses. So is the issue actually with Bitcoin's energy usage or is it just with Bitcoin itself? I mean, mostly everybody sees the value of Christmas lights, and so we don't have large organizations heavily funded to cancel Christmas lights based on their energy usage. But to understand Bitcoin's value, you first have to understand why it's needed. What problem does it solve? Because it, it doesn't matter how much energy Bitcoin uses, at the end of the day, if you don't believe Bitcoin is useful, 
then however much energy it uses will be wasted energy. But instead of making this a three hour Bitcoin explainer video, I'll just direct you to our blog to learn more about Bitcoin's purpose. Because I, I want to focus on this energy criticism for now. So far we've just been looking at whether or not the casting of Bitcoin as an all-consuming energy behemoth is accurate or not. And it, it's not. But even if we ignore that for a second and just assume that the premise of the argument wasn't deeply flawed, does the argument even still make any sense? If we look at the argument Bitcoin is a threat to the environment, the premise isn't that it uses too much energy, the premise is that it causes too many emissions. This is a really important distinction to make because emissions are created when you produce energy, not when you use it. And Bitcoin uses energy, it doesn't produce it. And so there's another assumption in there that Bitcoin's energy usage is causing energy production to increase since that's the bit that's responsible for the emissions. But we're not done. There's another assumption that the resultant increase in energy production produces more emissions. And another assumption that those emissions are large enough to be considered a threat to the environment. And an assumption that such a threat outweighs the threat posed by having a world without Bitcoin in it. And there are a million more assumptions in that last bit alone, but we'll just stop there for now. That's a lot of assumptions to have grouped together into the premise of your argument. And the whole argument starts to kind of fall apart when you give each of those assumptions its due attention. For instance, the assumption that Bitcoin is causing energy production to increase may be true on a technicality, but also clearly not by much. But the assumption that such energy production increases causing emissions to rise isn't quite so obvious. Not all methods of producing energy are the same, and some produce way more carbon emissions than others. And this is where we get the term clean energy from, right? It's energy that doesn't produce too many. One of the most common sources of clean energy is hydroelectric, which essentially just harvests the force generated by large moving bodies of water like streams and rivers and converts it into electricity. Here's a chart of estimated energy sources in the US. Note that the blue hydroelectric section is pretty much invisible. And now here's much of the same chart, but except applied to mining. That looks a lot more blue. And even still, the assumption that Bitcoin's demand for energy will increase carbon emissions is wrong on other counts as well. Because Bitcoin mining essentially allows you to convert electricity into digital money wherever you have an internet connection, it makes it so that rural Rural, so the rural, rural. It makes it so the villages in the global south can afford to build hydroelectric power stations that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Why is this? Well, here's an example. People use much more electricity in the summer for air conditioning and much more gas in the winter for central heating. But the infrastructure for both gas and electricity has to be able to accommodate or be built with enough capacity to withstand the demand that it has through its peak levels. So the gas infrastructure can't be built to only sustain people through the summer because when winter comes along, they won't be able to provide enough gas to enough people. And the same goes for the electricity. And that means that for the majority of the time that these power stations are running, they are not being utilized at 100% of their capacity, which means that this energy is just going to waste. And because Bitcoin miners are always looking for the cheapest sources of energy possible to increase the profitability of their mining operation, this excess energy that's being produced and just thrown to the side can be utilized by Bitcoin miners. This is a game changer because where banks would usually not be able to justify providing a loan to these villages that are trying to build this clean energy infrastructure, a Bitcoin miner can now come in and prove to the bank exactly how the loan will be repaid through mining Bitcoin with the excess energy production. Now we've got clean energy being built all around the world, and it's not because somebody said you must go and do that, it's because Bitcoin actually made it profitable. All of this is a very long-winded way of saying that the Bitcoin energy criticism is just wrong. But that doesn't mean that it won't fail to taint the public's perception of Bitcoin. So subscribe to this channel because we're going to be trying to unravel some of the many misconceptions around Bitcoin by actually explaining the things that the headlines are just asking you to blindly accept. And as usual, there'll be links in the description for further learning on some of the topics that I talked about in this video. But don't hesitate to drop a comment and, and ask us if you have any questions about any of the particular parts, because I'm sure we can get back to you and, and help you out with that. But that's just about it. So thank you for watching.